So, hello and welcome uh, to the first live session um, for the plastic waste management course uh, in this uh, particular semester. As you might be knowing, this is the third offering of this course. We started offering this course in, uh, in January of 2019. So, that was the first time it was offered. So, now this is the third offering and this is the first live session. Uh, we will have two live session uh, as you, if you have taken another NPTEL courses, you know that we do live session uh, uh, like a couple of live sessions for 10 week and three live session actually for a 12 week course. So let's get uh, started. Um, as uh, we do in the live session, uh, uh, we look at uh, the questions that you have posted, uh, you have been provided, uh, the registered student for this course have been provided uh, with a Google form and you have uh, put on some questions there. So we will take those questions first. Uh, meanwhile, you can put your questions on the chat box. We are keeping an eye on the chat box and we will respond to those questions as we make progress. And I have also pulled few questions from the discussion forum and if the time permits, we will look over those questions as well. So let's get started. So the first question is, uh, is from uh, uh, Manishwani uh, Maganur. Um, she is uh, uh, talking about that few years back, uh, there was uh, the roads were made up of plastic. In, uh, uh, plastic has been invented, which is economical and effective, but not being utilized in our country uh, more. Why aren't we not using a chance to reuse the plastic waste? Uh, in fact, uh, plastic waste in roads are being used. It's not that it's not being used. Yes, it, uh, it started uh, from a lab in southern India, and uh, from there it has been used in uh, uh, different uh, 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 like, uh, applications. So uh, it's uh, like for the road application, so it is, it is being used. It's not that it's not being used. Uh, yes, you can say that it's not being used at the level at which you would like it to be. Or, uh, so reason for that, uh, again, uh, which I think I mentioned that in the class many times as well, that lack of source segregation. So when you have, when you have mixed plastic, which is dirty, which gets dirty because of all the other, other material which gets in there, you have to clean those plastics before you can use it for road construction. See, when you are using anything for road construction, it becomes a material. If you cannot, uh, so you are basically plastic derived from the plastic waste is being used in road construction. So if uh, plastic is not clean, if the plastic is dirty, so you cannot uh, use it. So, and then you have to clean it up. So you have, that means you are using a lot of water, uh, a lot of uh, energy to clean it up. And so you have to look at the overall life cycle impact as well. There has been some date, some concern in terms of the long-term efficacy of this plastic being used in road construction. So, what will happen if uh, uh, this plastic gets into microplastic and then it starts uh, like a runoff coming off from these roads and all that? There have been some research studies have been done on that area, which raises a little bit of concern, but jury is not out on that yet. So we don't really know that whether it's going to be a big problem. But again, because of lack of source segregation, because of the dirty plastic, uh, those road manufacturers at many places, they are reluctant to use this plastic waste in road construction. Then we have uh, Subrajit Bhadaji. Uh, he is talking about that, can we use plastics and plastic bottles from, uh, from the sewage canal as a construction material in any type of construction? If yes, then how we can do this? Again, See, we were talking about uh, use of plastic in the road construction. So it is a, again a construction material. There have been some usage of plastic in construction material which is happening. You have to keep that plastic clean. And uh, although it's a waste material, we think that waste material, how can it be clean? It, uh, so it means, see when you're trying to recycle, it's a material. It's no more, it's a, well, we call it material recycling facility, isn't it? It's no more a garbage, it's actually a material. Uh, which can be, which will substitute the natural material used for that particular construction. So it has to be clean and that, uh, so if you can ca get all those uh, plastic from those canals and uh, chop it off and then use it uh, uh, f uh, f and you can use it for certain application, there has been some uh, uh, work on using plastic as a brick. People are also doing some eco bricks. You may have seen that if you Google eco bricks, you will find more details on that as well. So there are a lot of applications are being sought after. There are pros and cons of everything. Say there are uh, benefits and drawbacks of whatever you try to do, uh, but uh, it, it is, it can be used. So to answer your question, it can be used as long as you keep it cleaner. And then if it cannot be safe, if it cannot be used in construction, 
plastic can be a good uh, uh, waste to energy candidate as well as long as you do proper air pollution control system. Now I have uh, Rosen Saxena uh, who is a long time student uh, of uh, different NPTEL courses uh, that we have offered. I think he has, uh, this is maybe his uh, taking it again because he was in 2020 plastic waste and e-waste, he took it last time and he was among the toppers and also he was, uh, he also took the other course on integrated solid waste management. So he has uh, three questions. Uh, this is really nice to see that is still excited with lots of questions. I really like to have these kind of students in the class. Um, so his first question is uh, in, in Namkeen packets, which is actually snacks packets that we have. It is mentioned that this plastic bag is recyclable and biodegradable, but raising code seven is given, which is actually for other plastic. See, raising code has been done for those traditional plastic. You had those one through seven. Now seven is for others. So PLA, polylactic acid, uh, which could be the basis of this particular biodegradable plastic bag, Okay, sorry for that. We had some technical issues for which uh, the live uh, got stopped for a while. So we are back online now. So thank you for your patience and for uh, being there. So I'll go back, get back to the last question that we are trying to answer. That is from uh, Ross and Sakshena. As uh, I was mentioning that uh, he has been around on NPTEL courses uh, that is being offered from our group for quite some time and doing quite well. So uh, his first question is that in uh, Namkeen packet, uh, it is mentioned that this plastic bag is recyclable and biodegradable, but raising code seven is also mentioned, which refers to other plastics. Uh, so is this information written on the bag is false or, uh, or true? Since uh, number seven plastic is very difficult to recycle, it is no point in saying it is biodegradable. See, biodegradable does not really mean recyclable as well. Uh, bio recyclable means that you can make new products out of that, isn't it? So, and these resin codes have been done on traditional plastic. So, traditional plastic, you have the PET, HDPE, LDPE, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, PP and PS and all those different resin codes which is out there. Number seven is for other types. Number seven is other types since this biodegradable plastic most likely it is uh, probably the bag that you are referring to probably is coming from PLA based uh, which is polylactic acid and that uh, PLA since it is doesn't meant, doesn't come under any other resin code it is put under others category and uh, usually when we talk about biodegradable plastic we don't talk about their uh, uh, recyclability we talk about the compostability of this biodegradable plastic so we have to look at whether this biodegradable plastic is actually compostable uh, many times this biodegradable plastic, although it suggests that it is compostable, it is not compostable in a home composter or a traditional composter. Actually, you need to have an industrial level composter to do composting of that. So that's where to we look at when we talk about biodegradable plastic. So it is, it is uh, if the number seven is there because it does not uh, come under number one through six. Uh, one through six is for a particular resin type and uh, P, P, uh, this uh, biodegradable plastic does not belong to any of those resin types. That's why it has been put under others category, okay. Now the second question uh, he has is uh, uh, whether uh, do bio, bioplastic or compostable plastic, biodegradable plastic also have a resin code associated with them. So for now, as far as I know, uh, they, have, they are being put under number seven. So these things, see everything is so dynamic uh, in uh, this uh, waste management in general and also in plastic waste area. So if there is something new out there, I'm like, uh, uh, I just uh, tried to look at this afternoon as well. I could not find any. So I, I assume that it is still under our number seven, which is the others category. So there is no new category has been uh, put in for uh, uh, this biodegradable plastic. Also inside it, there is aluminum foil used. Is it looking, uh, it's looking like an MLP, uh, multi-layered packaging. How it can be biodegradable or are they mentioning false info? So unless we see the bag, uh, it's very difficult to tell you whether it's a false or a true. And uh, unless we kind of not only see the bag, we have to actually look at the bag uh, from a 
uh, characterization point of view to find out what is exactly there. So based on what is exactly present, uh, based on the polymers which is there, look at the biodegradability of that material. So it can be tested out in the lab to find out whether it's biodegradable or not, but otherwise it's very difficult to say uh, this way. So best thing would be to kind of take some samples and test it out. Uh, there are, you know that uh, as Roshan, you have taken several courses, you are aware uh, that uh, there is a, we can do biodegradability test, uh, either uh, doing the BMP test or we can look in for CHONS and all that. And we can come up uh, with whether uh, it's biodegradable or not uh, under different conditions. Uh, then I have a question uh, uh, from uh, Elan Govar. Uh, uh, is plastic waste management being uh, effectively implemented all over India? Again, it's a very uh, open-ended, uh, very uh, very open-ended question. The answer to most of these questions actually comes out to be no. Because when you talk about all over India, India is a big country. There are issues of waste management. Even if you talk about municipal solid waste management rules, it is, is it being implemented all over India? Answer is possibly no. There are some good pockets. There are some initiatives. Uh, many states, may, many cities are doing a decent work. They are trying to implement it. But again, uh, as you may have heard uh, in the class many times, it is the lack of proper infrastructure. Having a rule is great, but then having proper infrastructure to get those rules implemented is, takes a lot of effort. And uh, uh, it's good that over last, uh, say, several years, because of the Swachh Bharat mission or Clean India mission and all that, and even before that, the Nirmal Bharat Abhiyan, so different uh, programs have been there. Uh, within those programs, there has been some uh, push in terms of having proper waste management infrastructure. Have we reached that stage? No. Have we, are we doing nothing? That also is no. We are making some progress, but still we have a long way to go. So to answer your question, is it being implemented? Uh, rules are there, but implementation is a bit on weaker side. Uh, Sunil Kumar is saying that how to control waste plastic uh, these days. Uh, so uh, again, I would go back to the basics of segregation, source segregation. At least follow waste management rules 2016, which says wet and dry segregation. So, because see, we will have this plastic waste being produced. We don't want plastic waste, but unfortunately the lifestyle is such in, uh, and that the way we are like uh, recently with this uh, pandemic, again, we had a lot of uh, plastic packaging and a lot of things came back to the market. So. We like it or we don't like it in the near future, in the coming decade for sure, we will have a lot of plastic waste coming into our waste stream. So the thing is that we have to look at ways to manage it. So of course we should look at the alternatives. I'm not saying that stop thinking about alternatives. We should think about alternatives. We should try to come up with a material which can replace plastic. And the material which will replace plastic has to be economically at a similar level. If it's too costly, it will not work. If it does not do the job that plastic does, it will not work. So to find a material which does the job that a plastic does and which comes at a relatively similar price range with, relative, uh, with a sim similar uh, like workability, it's not that easy. It does not happen overnight. It takes years, sometimes decades to find those materials. So, we should research on it, we should try to develop those materials, we should look at the alternatives, all those things should go in parallel, but at the same time, we cannot assume that we will not have plastic waste coming in the waste stream. It, it will be there, it, uh, because it's inevitable right now. So since it will be there, let's manage it properly as long as it is there. And uh, so for that, you need at least do wet and dry separation. If you can do the wet and dry separation, the dry waste can be taken can be separated into different fractions and then we can use that dry waste uh, uh, like plastic for either for say road construction if it's a clean plastic if it's a suitable plastic we can use in waste to energy plant we can do the plastic recycling uh, it is already all, all these markets are available so because of the mixed nature dirty nature of the plastic it is becoming a problem in terms of recycling those recycling and resource recovery of those uh, plastic how we, Arun Gopal is saying, how we say that plastic is a waste. Uh, see, as a waste, uh, when we say, say if, it, if it doesn't have value for you, when you discard a, discard a material, 
which does not have value for you, it is a waste material. So, so if you are discarding certain things, that's a waste material. That's a typical definition of a waste. So it's, uh, I, I think that's what you are asking for. I'm not, not pretty much sure about what exactly you are trying to refer to. Then Shupriya is saying, which process is more economical? Segregation of various types of plastics, including multi-layered, or putting it in waste to energy plants for energy conversion. Now, that's, again, you have to do a uh, economic analysis. So it depends. Again, it, the answer is more, it depends actually. If you're talking about multi-layered packaging, if you're talking about uh, those uh, plastic uh, uh, other than P, like the ones which are easier to recycle, say PET, HDPE, and then a couple of other resin codes which are easier to recycle, which we have talked about in the class. So if you're those, I would say go for recycling. For those mixed plastics and the other things which is very difficult to recycle and if you don't have local markets for that and uh, film plastics for example, if you have a waste to energy plant, let's go for a waste to energy plant for those. With a proper air pollution control system, run the plant at around 1000 degrees centigrade or higher so that you don't produce dioxin, furans and other things because uh, these plastics have good calorific value so you can do resource recovery out, out of that. So again, it's, you have to have mix of both. It, uh, it's not that I would say the ones which are easier to recycle, let's, uh, we should try to recycle those first and then which cannot be recycled but uh, can go to waste to energy plant. How to control waste plastic? I think we talked about that, Sunil Kumar. Uh, we do talk about uh, in terms of uh, how to uh, go for waste plastic. So that kind of ends the question that we had uh, that you put on the Google sheet. Now I'll try to get the questions one by one that you are putting on the uh, chat box. Uh, the first uh, kindly suggest, uh, Ravi Verma is saying that kindly suggest uh, 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 research topic for plastic waste for road flexible payment. Now again, uh, you can see uh, people are using uh, plastic in the road construction. Uh, JESCO in Jamshedpur, and then there are several in also in south southern parts. Uh, many parts, even the government has mandated that uh, you, we should try to use certain uh, uh, fraction of plastic waste as a in road construction. So this is already there. So in terms of research, you can look at the pavement, uh, look at the pavement quality, look at the strength of the pavement, you can look at the durability of the pavement. You can also, from an environmental point of view, I would be interested if somebody looks at long-term performance of these uh, uh, plastics in the pavement in terms of release of microplastics uh, from these to the subsurface, uh, to the surface water or soil nearby. So those are the research topics which, which you can look at, which will be a very good mixture of uh, transportation engineering and environmental engineering, and also material science. So those, uh, you, if you uh, get some uh, uh, professors working in this area, you can, you can talk to them and try to do a PhD on that area. That PhD will be useful for the country and of course to the world uh, to, to answer some of the questions, some of the queries that we have, some of the concerns we have in terms of usage of plastic in road construction. Then we have a question from uh, Comperla uh, Saisri. Uh, is segregation of waste, uh, like in Japan, at a basic level, a good process for waste management? If yes, can we implement it? What are the pros and cons for this type? Uh, we do talk about these. Uh, if you, it looks like you have not taken our other uh, NPTEL course on integrated waste management, which is offered in the July session, I will strongly encourage you to register for that course because that will you will get these kind of uh, discussion, quite detailed discussion. But to answer your question, segregation, as we say, as I said earlier as well, as part of this live session, segregation is required. Like segregation is, is we need to do segregation. Either you do it at a house level or you bring it as a centralized location. I will prefer to do it in a house level because uh, that, that way we can reduce contamination to a maximum. So, uh, uh, so that's, and whether we can go all the way, how the Japan does in a multi, multi, multi uh, like a stream, uh, probably not to start with. Let's follow what the manage, uh, waste management rules 2016 says, where wet and dry, and that itself will help in terms of uh, uh, doing proper resource recovery from this waste component. If you don't do anything with that, then uh, it's very difficult to do recycling and resource recovery. We lose a lot of value out of that. So pros and cons, of course, uh, pros, uh, of course, the government has looked into the pros and cons in detail and put that in the rule for the codes. If you, again, I will uh, encourage you to watch uh, the collection uh, system video of uh, integrated waste management codes. Uh, it's available on YouTube where we talk, we do talk about pros and cons in detail, but in very, say, 
you will you will have better uh, re better resource recovery if you do that uh, you will pay, spend some money then you have to do the techno economic analysis and you have to also look at the life cycle analysis to see in the big picture if you don't do this uh, source segregation how much not only you are losing from a monetary point of view but you are also uh, losing from an environmental cost so put that put that all those things in picture you will uh, uh, find that actually it is much it is it is advisable uh, to go for source segregation for at least wet and dry. That's the reason why the government is asking us to do, isn't it? Uh, in the rules, it suggests you do at least wet and dry segregation. So we have to, uh, we should try to follow that. Uh, Locus, uh, what will be the final exam pattern, subjective or objective? So it will be similar to what has been given to you in the quizzes. Uh, uh, every week. So, if you are doing, I, if you are following the quiz as well, and if you are doing the pra quiz practice, and also if you are looking at uh, the course uh, course videos and following it up, uh, you should be okay. You are taking this live session, so that uh, only that kind of tells me that you are a sincere student. So, as long as you do all the quizzes and everything, the exam will be similar. So, don't worry about that. Abdul, uh, sir, in assignment four, the answer of question one is doubtful. So, Abdul, I request you to kindly put that on the discussion forum. Uh, we, I don't remember right now the assignment four as well as question one, but uh, I would, we, we have taken a note of that. Uh, we will look at uh, that assignment uh, and uh, we will find out if there is any problem with those. Uh, we, we will, of course, uh, issue clarification. And if needed, uh, we'll see how that question can be handled. So don't worry about that, but do mention this in the discussion forum, although we have taken a note of your uh, stuff. Uh, Deva Anand, uh, some questions are indirectly asked in week four. So again, uh, see, the week you have to use your brain. So the, this is a graduate kind of level course or a senior undergraduate level course. This is not a uh, uh, Olymp like a high school or a elementary school course. So I want you to use your brain. Some questions are asked indirectly. It's, it's a, you listen to the video, uh, think about it. So unless we pick your brain a little bit, how will your brain develop? So it's, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry if it, uh, the questions were a bit uh, uh, not what you wanted, but these are part of life, isn't it? It's a, you, you, we have to challenge you sometimes. So uh, it's, uh, it, if it was uh, indirectly used, so uh, it, was for, it is same for everyone, isn't it? It's not that we were unfair to some uh, versus the other. Again, there is another question of uh, assignment uh, question is doubtful in uh, week four. So please put that in, uh, in the discussion forum because that's, so this live session is for uh, mainly if you have certain doubts and other stuff regarding, as, as, if you have a particular questions on uh, uh, regarding an exam question, sorry, assignment questions or weekly quizzes question, uh, please put that on the discussion forum because see, we don't, uh, I don't have all the questions in front of me right now, uh, but uh, we will definitely, uh, for, uh, look at those and uh, get back to you on that. Chandrakant uh, is uh, is talking about the recently there was a news on microplastic being found in fetus. How can we completely eradicate the source of microplastic, which we are so dangerous for the environment, policies, education, and awareness? Very good question, actually, Chandrakant. Uh, it's a, yes, I saw that also, and uh, in fact, I shared it on some of the, the social media platform where I'm uh, active. So it's, it is a concern if it is showing up in, uh, in fetus. Uh, it is, uh, in fact, uh, microplastic. Uh, we have been working uh, as, uh, like right now, we, had a, we just almost finished the project uh, with National Geographic Society, uh, with National Geographic TV that you watch. So they had funded certain projects where looking at plastic pollution uh, to River Ganges. So uh, from uh, India, like I was, uh, my, my research team from IIT Kharagpur, we were involved in that. And uh, we were looking at in terms of mismanaged plastic. And then one component of that plastic uh, uh, project was also looking at microplastic. It was not our job, but uh, the other research partners were doing that. And uh, so we, we were also following what is uh, coming up. So we, are, we do see microplastic microplastics in, uh, in water and microplastics has been reported. In fact, uh, you, if you have looked at those uh, lecture videos, we talk about that microplastic has been reported in, uh, in salt nowadays. It has been reported in the mineral water bottle. So it, since it is, it's kind of getting everywhere, so the chances of seeing up in the fetals uh, was not very surprising, but of course it was a bit uh, uh, shocking to see that it was there. So uh, like how we can completely eradicate by better managing. So as I said earlier, we, this plastic is not going to disappear overnight. We, we may, uh, and again, I would uh, reiterate that it's 
plastic as a material is not a problem. It is the mismanaged plastic waste which is a problem. I, I will repeat saying that plastic as a material is not that big of a problem. It is the mismanaged plastic, mismanaged plastic waste. We, whatever plastic waste we produce, we are not managing it properly. So that is creating a lot of issue. Uh, single use plastic, we should try to not use it. Like single use, we should try to phase out as early as possible. But some of the, some of the plastic goods, like the right now I'm uh, using a uh, computer monitor in front of me, you are watching on a, probably on a cell phone or a, a laptop or a monitor, or uh, you walk into any of uh, these hospitals, uh, all the uh, IC, like, uh, ICU rooms and different places, you see lots of plastics. Plastic is all around us. So we need plastic. And it, uh, we need this plastic as a material. The problem comes is that when we don't manage the waste, we don't manage this plastic waste properly. So that's where uh, the issue is. So this is again, how to prevent it, Chandrakant? It is to make sure that we manage our plastic waste properly. Follow the plastic waste management rules, do the wet and dry segregation, and those, that's, that's how it, it can be done. That's the, that's, we, we have to set up a robust plastic waste management system. Because, and then gradually, if we can phase out plastic, it's good, we can get to some other material will come, which should be able to do all the jobs that the plastic does. But the problem is more of a plastic waste management, not plastic. Plastic as a material is, is, is uh, you can say that plastic as a material is causing the plastic waste management problem, yes. So as the paper, so as the food waste. So, uh, so there are a lot of other <laughs> waste stream as well. They are also creating problem. Plastic being, uh, uh, it's creating, it's it, because of uh, so much of plastic out there and then things get into the stormwater drain. So it's more visible. Uh, but there are a lot of other waste streams as well which creates issue. So we have to focus on proper plastic waste management system. Supriyo Sen says, National Award uh, 2017 policy announced by China is an effort to uh, national, a national short policy. That's a, it is there. It's the national short policy. We do talk about that. I think it's towards the later part of the course. So you will get the detail on national short policy of 2017 of the China ban and how it has impacted the global plastic uh, waste uh, management system. So in, it has been explained in quite detail, actually. In fact, I think we have spent almost a week on talking about this uh, uh, China uh, national short policy and its implication on plastic waste management in the waste Western world and also in the Indian uh, Indian contest. So I would say you wait for that particular week and then uh, uh, look at that. And it's still after, after going over that, whatever the questions you have, uh, please do ask in the next uh, live session uh, because uh, to explain the whole thing will take more than an hour because as I said, it's, we have taken almost a week uh, material to do that. Uh, so annual plastic waste generation in India. So what exactly? Uh, uh, you are talking about like what is the quantity of plastic waste generation in India? Uh, I, I don't remember in the uh, top of my head, but it will be something around 25,000 tons or something like that. I'm not, I don't remember those. You can Google it and you find it. What is the annual plastic waste generation in India? So it's not that you don't have to memorize those figures. It's just uh, you have to see that how to manage those plastic. That's what we need to uh, more focus about. You can always find this number. Uh, we have some number in the courses as well, uh, but I don't remember that in, uh, in it right now in top of my head. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see. We are, uh, uh, we have, uh, Chandrakant, is there any course on LCA through NPTEL? Yes, there is a course on LCA through NPTEL. In fact, that has, uh, it, is, uh, it is again, it's a course done by me. Uh, it's called uh, Sustainable Engineering and Lifecycle uh, Analysis. I think that's the name of the course. Uh, the first version when we uh, run it, I think it was the Introduction to Life Cycle Assessment. Then the, we changed the name a little bit, but if you go on, again, if you go on YouTube and put uh, uh, Sustainable Engineering Life Cycle and with my name, you'll find it. If you go on NPTEL website also, you will find it there too. And I think that codes will rerun next year. You can find it there. Uh, it's, uh, it did not run this year, uh, but it is, I think, is scheduled to run uh, next year. Some of you may be aware that NPTEL has now done a micro specialization kind of stuff. So you can take a specialization in environment and uh, several courses are listed there. So among those courses, that LCA course is also listed. So you can uh, take some core courses uh, and then there are certain elective courses. So LCA course is listed there. 
so it will be offered once, maybe once in two years it will be offered. That's the, that's the plan. So you will see that uh, course. But meanwhile, if you want to learn about that, you can always go on YouTube and this is available for free. Because, uh, uh, so you can uh, look, uh, look through that and go through the playlist of uh, LCA course. If you find difficulty finding it, just put, it, put a note on the discussion forum. We'll put a link there as well. Vignes is asking, which do you think is more harmful, microplastics or nanoplastic? See, micro, uh, again, uh, nanoplastic, uh, which uh, is a term uh, which will kind of come within the microplastic itself. So it's, uh, we, we don't use the term uh, nanoplastic that much from an environmental point of view still, uh, but uh, microplastic means anything less than five uh, millimeter. So anything above five millimeter is macro, M-A-C-R-O, anything below five millimeter is micro. So anything below five micro millimeter means uh, your uh, nanoplastic is also there. Now, is smaller the plastic pieces, more the problem, isn't it? So it's a tinier, tinier particle will be more the problematic. So if you, if you think about that, of course, the nanoplastic will be more problematic than the microplastic. So because the tinier ones, they more the surface area, they will try to, they can also move through the environmental system much easier. So of course, they, they will be more dangerous uh, than uh, microplastic. Now, we again, you have to look at uh, uh, in terms of uh, in, in terms of the long term fate and transport of these plastics and what happens with that. There has been studies on uh, those uh, two. We have looked at uh, some of you uh, may have seen. Uh, we have done a blue paper on uh, uh, on uh, like a, on plastic pollution in ocean uh, and and with other pollution ha happening in ocean as well. So. So we have uh, in that blue paper we looked at uh, the different sources of uh, uh, these plastics as well as microplastic getting into the ocean and how to control those blue uh, in to control those those as well. So we'll we'll try to put that blue paper on uh, in on the course website on the course discussion forum so you can look at it where we talk about uh, this microplastic in a bigger scale uh, in a in big, bigger scale in terms of its impact on uh, on different uh, environmental system. Uh, so uh, Asit Nima uh, uh, Nima ji is a is a senior a very uh, like a, a good friend of mine. Thank you, uh, sir, for joining. Uh, uh, like, how are e U.S. and EU now coping with uh, uh, plastic waste post China ban? It is actually ending up in landfills, unfortunately. In uh, I know about U.S. more. I don't uh, EU. I I can. Uh, uh, just bits and pieces information I, I do have, but uh, if you look at again uh, uh, in in the news uh, articles which uh, shows up on different uh, websites these days, we have uh, uh, like EcoWatch and uh, they, there are different websites out there which you can have a look at that. Uh, what we have seen is uh, in general, if I just talk about in general, uh, some places they are trying to develop local market. Uh, we, I was visiting Australia in 2018, and I found uh, that in Australia, especially Western Australia, uh, like uh, sorry, uh, Southern Australia, where Adelaide is, uh, uh, we had a uh, lot of in, lot of uh, uh, initiative in terms of using those plastic waste within the country because of uh, uh, the ban in China. Uh, what, what China did is actually they did not really ban, the, what the, the language is that uh, the contamination should be less than 0.5 percent. So if you have, if you're sending 100 kg of plastic, it should not have uh, less, it should have less than 0.5 kg of contaminant in there. So these recyclers in US and EU, Australia, New Zealand, wherever they used to send things to, uh, uh, to this uh, uh, country, to China, more primarily to China, uh, they found that if they have to have to do this cleanup all the way to that much purity, so they should rather should, can use it within their own country. So there have been some incentive uh, of developing this recycling market within the country itself. So that is happening there. You will see some uh, pockets of initiatives showing up in different places. But they have also tried to send uh, plastic to say places like India, places Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, and a lot of other countries. Uh, they have uh, uh, started trying to send over there. Even recently, there was something sent to I think Sri Lanka, where in from UK, where they asked us to, they actually send it back uh, because of contamination there as well. So, 
they have been trying to find alternative markets where they can send it but at the same time they are, they are also looking at developing markets within the country and but at many places they are struggling to do plastic recycling too but from time to time we see that in the newspapers uh, uh, like in different websites that they are struggling so they are sending it to uh, municipal solid waste landfill or they are, if they have a waste to energy plant they are sending it to waste to energy plant so it's that's what uh, hap that's what it is uh, happening over there right now so it's a mixed bag. Some uh, some uh, places they have tried to come up with uh, ways to manage, ways to recycle it within the country. It's places where they cannot, they are putting it in municipal solid waste landfill, especially in US. Uh, in EU, they are put, probably go for waste to energy plants where they can at least do resource recovery. And they do have in EU, for most part, they have uh, good uh, uh, air pollution control systems. So they are able to manage in terms of dioxin, furans, and other things as well. So, uh, Renish, Renisha Angel, uh, why do we need to make new plastic? The recycled plastic can be reused. Uh, good question. Uh, see, when you go for recycling of plastic, uh, you always, when you, every time you recycle, you start losing a little bit of uh, its, its strength as well. So, if you look at the recycle content, it's not 100% recycled. So, you mix virgin plastic with recycled plastic. So, that's the reason you need to go for uh, recycled plastic. In certain uh, application, recycled plastics are still not being allowed. So that's, that's why you need uh, virgin plastic there as well. And uh, since that much, if, if uh, the waste collection in country like India or similar to India, since everything gets mixed up, the plastic gets so dirty. And then many times these plastics are actually mixed plastic. So uh, it's not only one type of plastic. It's uh, the container, for example, tomato ketchup. Tomato ketchup, you will have two different types. You have plastic in between. You have a layer of something else uh, just to keep the moisture uh, uh, like a, from the air does not get into those bottles. So it's a multi-layered packaging. So many, many plastic uh, products which is out there, they cannot actually be recycled. Theoretically, they can, but practically they are not able to recycle. That's the reason why you need to produce a new plastic out there. Uh, but uh, there are uh, like uh, some uh, they, we can recycle plastic and mix it with the virgin plastic and make new products out of that. Uh, Deep uh, Hamirani, we are working on project topic converting plastic to fuel. How can we characterize the product? Also, how can we uh, uh, how we can convenient to list a problem? Let me see. Uh, also, how we can convenience to use product. So there is some uh, looks like there is some uh, uh, spelling mistake. Uh, so it's um, uh, it's so in terms of uh, uh, characterizing the product, uh, it's essentially I think you are, since you are talking about fuel, uh, so you are talking about uh, looking at uh, waste characteristics in terms of uh, uh, your uh, calorific value, and also if you are talking about a storage of fuel, so long term stability of your fuel pallets, and then what is the uh, like your like strength of the fuel pallets, whether it will break down into the particles and all that. So there are tests out there. There are uh, tests out there. In fact, we have uh, uh, recently published uh, some, we have submitted some papers. We are doing some work in this area. So I would say you, uh, uh, like if whatever is your specific question, because it's a very general uh, question you have. So in terms of how can you characterize, you will use different instruments to characterize it. For calorific value, bomb calorimeter is there. Uh, for your, uh, in terms of looking at the structural strength, if you want to look at the different bonding, you can do FTIR, you can do TGA. So it depends on what type of parameters you want to characterize it for. Uh, what is the goal of your study? You, that's based on that we can always, uh, uh, there are different instruments which you can use. So uh, if, you, uh, if you are a bit more specific, we, I can tell you more specific answer, but in general that's what it is. So you can use different instruments to characterize to find out whether your fuel is good enough. So one of the important is your calorific value. You can also do CHONS. Uh, to look at, uh, and you can look at the FTIR to look at the different bonding. You can see how they, if you're interested from a research point of view, how the conversion happened, what was the, uh, pro, uh, how, how the different uh, uh, things are uh, getting, uh, like how the reaction is taking place, the mechanism. So we'll do the characterization accordingly. Okay, so then uh, we have, uh, uh, again, uh, Neemaji, uh, that, uh, our policy makers are enamored with this idea of plastic oil, but it has not really shown to work on commercial full scale. What is your experience and any references? So yeah, plastic oil, uh, I have also, um, uh, like a, I have not seen any big plant uh, kind of doing that plastic oil. Uh, in terms of what I would suggest is uh, if we can 
try to uh, what out in terms of plastic, uh, if it, like uh, if you want to really do plastic to fuel and all that, uh, it we can try to um, make uh, uh, like a waste, waste to energy. That's what I would say the most easier way to go for. So collect your uh, recyclable plastic, collect it clean. Do recycling of PET, HDPE, and others uh, which are easier to recycle, like uh, those categories. Rest of the plastic, put it in a waste to energy plant and try to generate electricity from there. So that's the easier way to do it. This plastic oil and other things, uh, again, it requires very clean feed. Now, if, if you cannot provide clean feed, it becomes a problem. It also requires your constant supply of certain type of plastic. And uh, those, there are a lot of operational challenges associated with this uh, uh, stuff and that the oil quality is also, uh, uh, you need to look at the oil quantity. So I, like, I don't know, many, as, we, as we very well know that uh, it, this, uh, many times these policies are, get swayed by certain, uh, uh, like somebody comes and shows a very beautiful presentation and then uh, unfortunately we get swayed by that and then we say, okay, let's go and do that. We don't do the overall, uh, due diligence uh, of uh, uh, really looking at uh, things in more detail in terms of uh, what whether it will really work, what are the operational challenges and all that. So based on my experience, when you have asked for my experience, I have not seen commercial full-scale uh, uh, plant uh, working on that. And uh, in terms of any references, we'll try to put that in uh, in the course, uh, uh, like uh, in the discussion forum. I don't remember right now, but I will we'll find out and put that in the course reference, uh, course discussion forum. Uh, Supriyo Shane, is there any internship course for toppers? I think there is. You have to contact NPTEL office, NPTEL IIT Madras office for that. They do have uh, provisions for uh, uh, internship uh, for uh, your, uh, like uh, for the to toppers of courses, uh, for NPTEL courses, they do have an offer. So please uh, look at, look for their email and you can contact them. They will let you know as well. So all the administration part of this course is handled from our NPTEL IIT Madras office. So they are the people who can answer from an administrative point of view, from uh, like a the administration as well as the technical point of view, the course content and the, that is what we are uh, we we like I we get involved uh, in that. Uh, Prandia Gosavi has a plastic convert to fuel. This can be solution for managing waste plastic. Again, we just talked about that. What kind of fuel are you talking about? Uh, plastic as a uh, waste to energy, or uh, you are talking about plastic as a plasto char? And there are some research which has been done where there people are trying to make plaster char as well, and uh, they are trying to use that char as a as a fuel. And there have been uh, some research uh, being done. Uh, uh, there are the plastic is being used in waste to energy plant for uh, with along with other municipal solid waste. So when you say fuel, it's uh, it can be for all these different applications. Plastic just by itself as a fuel, we don't see that much uh, happening. Ultimately, what is plastic is coming from this uh, petrol-based product, it's a, isn't it? It's a crude-based product. Uh, your uh, crude distillation unit, uh, your uh, naphtha cracker units, so all those things, uh, CDU, VDU, and your uh, like naphtha cracker uh, unit and all that, that's what uh, in any petrochemical plants you go and see that uh, that's how uh, plastic is formed. Uh, so ethylene and then polyethylene. So that's, uh, it's, it's essentially coming from oil. So yes, it can go back as a fuel, but then Taking it back to the plastic oil and uh, and looking at how will you use that plastic oil just by itself, as we were trying to answer in the previous question, it becomes a challenging. That's why we don't see a commercially scale plant for plastic to oil. Uh, but uh, it can be used as, since it's a good calorific value, it can be used as a fuel source as long as you manage the air pollution properly. Uh, you're talking about how we can tackle plastic waste litter and what laws govern it. So again. Uh, uh, it's basically it's a plastic waste management rules, isn't it? So we, if we do proper collection, if uh, we do proper collection of plastic waste uh, from uh, like a, uh, if the plastic waste is collected properly at the municipal level, at uh, at the uh, like the city level, or even in the uh, ur like a semi-urban rural areas nowadays, if this plastic waste is collected properly, you should you will not see this littering happening. And as a, as a citizen of the country, we also have certain responsibility of not litter it away anywhere we want. So in terms of uh, there are anti-litter law uh, pretty much everywhere in the country where it says that if you do this, you, there's a five rupees, 500 rupees fine, this much fine. Yes, many times those laws are not implemented properly. 
And if the waste is collected properly, sort segregated from individual, from uh, if we have the provision for proper waste collection system, and as a citizen, as a responsible citizen, if we take part in uh, uh, the process and help the government agencies to collect it properly, then the littering will, of course, will go down. So again, it kind of goes back to what we were trying to talk in the very beginning of the course, having proper infrastructure for plastic waste management. Pl proper infrastructure for plastic waste management is that's that's the need of the day. So if you if we can do that proper infrastructure for plastic waste management, where we can collect this plastic waste properly, and uh, as as much clean as possible, then most of the problem most there are technologies out there uh, which can handle uh, most of this plastic waste. Uh, uh, Chandrakant is asking: Is it possible to run any course on marine pollution and prevention through NPTEL for mariners? Uh, it is uh, like uh, since you're talking about marine pollution, uh, it's kind of goes a little bit beyond my expertise. Uh, but yes, it's a good topic. I would uh, pass on your information to our NPTEL office. Uh, they can uh, ask for people to who can uh, who can uh, uh, put a course out that. And you never know. Maybe in uh, future, at some point of time, if I have if I'm doing some research in that area, uh, I will I may try to put a course in this area too. But right now. Uh, like uh, my focus is mostly as probably those of you who know, I call myself a garbologist. So I work with different types of garbage. So it's, uh, and our focus is mostly on uh, uh, urban solid waste with some rural solid waste, like municipal solid waste, food waste, plastic waste. So that's the way where we are uh, doing most of our work. Uh, so that's what, um, uh, where we are trying to uh, offer courses. So, we, because when if you if you looked at my courses, whenever I talk about core in a class, I give you a lot of example from the different research projects that are I have been involved with, or I have seen, or I have read about. So, we, it always excites uh, me to do courses on those areas. So, but it's a good topic, and uh, it uh, I will definitely pass on this information uh, to uh, like a NPTEL office for them to look at. Uh, Ravi Verma, what is the most promising area for research for plastic waste management? Again, uh, Ravi, it's a very broad question. Uh, what exactly in plastic waste management are you talking about? Say, and what is your background? If you are an engineer, I would say you should look at uh, uh, resource recovery from plastic waste. Say, once the waste is collected properly, uh, like uh, plastic waste is say, assuming that we are, we all are following waste management rules 2016. So now you have all this plastic waste stream. How to do resource recovery from there, especially from mixed plastic, from multi-layered plastic. So those are the ones uh, which are problematic. Now, if you have, if you know a little bit of microbiology and you are good in material science, I would say look for biodegradable plastic. How to generate biodegradable plastic, which is really biodegradable and which is really compostable uh, because many of those compostable plastic is actually not compostable in regular uh, term. They are compostable under very specific circumstances. So how to generate uh, regular plastic which has similar strength as uh, traditional plastic because otherwise people will not use it, isn't it? So if you are a, from a material science point of view, you can look at the material aspect of that. If you are uh, from a legal point of view, you can look at uh, all these EPR, extended producer responsibility policies and all those kind of aspects. So it depends on what is your uh, uh, area. So based on your uh, background, you can choose. There are a lot of things we need to learn about plastic waste. Uh, try to in terms of controlling the uh, having a better management of plastic waste. So based on your area, you can choose a topic, and uh, we touch upon several aspect of this in the course. So that should uh, uh, give you some idea. Again, uh, but if you uh, uh, like, if you put a bit more specific, talk about your per, like a usually uh, you can always uh, contact us through email. Uh, you can find up my email on the uh, on. Uh, I, like a, just to Google my name, you'll find my email. That's not a problem. So we can talk about that for your specific, uh, if you have any specific uh, issue uh, in, in terms of your, your research interest, we can talk about that. Weakness, is it, uh, say, talk, is it possible to create an environment for composting biodegradable plastic just like, uh, uh, just like as it is done for in, uh, in industrial compost or any such plastic degradable in water? Uh, there are some, uh, they, in fact, in the course also we show you that there are some uh, 
uh, this uh, I think it's I'm trying to remember the name it's a cellulose uh, based plastic if I remember correctly is starch sorry starch based plastic uh, which actually dissolves in water very easily so it will it will dissolve in water of course it will if it dissolve in water that means it will have good high BOD number uh, in that water so it has to be treated as a wastewater uh, for that but yeah there are you can create as I was trying to explain to Ravi just before uh, that uh, you have to look at the type of biodegradable plastic and based on uh, based on we can look at the conditions at which certain type of biodegradable plastic will degrade better. So, we can design a composter, we can design a say uh, degrade like anaerobic di digester or something where uh, these plastic can be degraded. So, but we have to look at uh, because just this plastic by itself will not be there, there will be other waste stream as well. So, we have to look at how that uh, composter will work with other waste stream. So, but yes, it can be, uh, it, it can be done. So, is, it is possible uh, to do that, uh, uh, but most of the present uh, plastic, uh, those biodegradable plastic which is coming out, they are not degradable in traditional composting system. Bani Prata uh, is asking, sir, you can visit our plant. We are a small startup, uh, sold at least 10 plants. Okay, so just send us your detail, we'll be happy. And then this plant is for what? I don't know, uh, but uh, we will be happy to uh, look at that. Uh, if, we are, if I'm in that area, we'll be happy to do that. Supriyo Shane and Chandra Bhushan about the final exam question paper, I already mentioned uh, it will be similar. Uh, to what you are getting in the quizzes. Uh, usually in the NPTEL courses, we try to do that. Uh, the type of questions that you see in your quiz, uh, similar type of question is also asked in the exam. So, it will not be something uh, like, of course, it will be different. Uh, it will, it cannot be the same question. Uh, it will be different question, but similar type of questions will be there. So, uh, Last question uh, is from uh, Deep uh, Harmani, which is talking about, I have seen project about zero loss process for wet urban solid waste management, but can't find much detail. Can you describe that project? I think you're talking about some newspaper article, which uh, uh, was done on our uh, work uh, in 2019, uh, where we looked at the food waste, uh, organic fraction of municipal solid waste. And uh, we were trying to look at that, you can take the organic fraction of municipal solid waste, and we did that hydrochar. Uh, where we produce this hydrochar, which could be used as a f as which could be used as a fuel pallets, uh, can be used as an adsorbent material, uh, can be also used as a uh, energy storage material as well. So we we have done that, and then the liquid part of that could be anaerobically digested uh, to produce biogas, and then liquid could be put can be recycled back as well because the hydrothermal carbonization required moisture. So I think you are referring to that. Uh, so for that. Uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, there is a, uh, there are again, uh, you just send me an email, we'll send you some papers, uh, which we have done on that area. And then again, if you go on uh, Google Scholar uh, and uh, to look for uh, details from our research group, you will find more papers uh, there as well. So, we can, but that's, I think that's what you're talking about. Uh, if, if I understood the question well, and that's, uh, 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 that's, uh, that's the answer uh, we have. Now again, a lot of questions on uh, <laughs> on the uh, on the question paper. Again, I think we have already uh, uh, we have already mentioned it in detail enough uh, that uh, it will be similar to the quizzes. So we cannot uh, tell you. We, uh, I think I, there is no more things need to be said about the exam. You are taking the quiz. Exam will be similar uh, to quiz. Of course, uh, it will not be the same question. It cannot be, uh, but. Uh, it will be similar. The exam pattern, the question of exam questions, the pattern of questions in the exam will be similar to what is there in the quizzes. Okay, I think. Uh, okay, so this is talking about plastic to oil plant. We have a plant in. Okay, we'll be more than happy. Just uh, send us the detail. Uh, we'll be uh, uh, Bani Brata Jana. Uh, please do send us the detail if you're taking this course. I think that you might be taking this course. Uh, so do send us the detail and we'll be happy to uh, look at uh, and uh, see how that plants are working. And if there is one in Durgapur, it's not too far from here. Uh, if you are in Durgapur sometime, let us know. We'll come and visit you and see the plant. So I think uh, that's it. Uh, we have almost uh, completed an hour. Sorry for that uh, technical glitch in between uh, for a little while. 
So thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will have another live session for this course towards the end before the exam. So it's still if you have some questions uh, related to exam, still I see some questions are coming up or you have uh, any other questions, any other queries, discussion, put the questions on the discussion forum. We are trying our best to respond back to those questions within a 24 hours time frame. And uh, if, uh, uh, if we get delayed for a little while, do bear with us. But uh, the target is to reply back to you within 24 hours in terms of any questions on the discussion forum. And uh, we will have another live session uh, for this course uh, towards the end of uh, uh, the, uh, the weeks uh, online. So uh, enjoy it. I'm hoping that you are enjoying the course. Keep enjoying the course. Uh, uh, and then uh, if you have some newer information, you can also share with us on the discussion forum. Uh, since this area is so much dynamic, uh, so there are a lot of new information comes on on a daily basis. So if there is something newer information which you want to share with the class, I would strongly encourage and you send it to us. If you don't want to put it in the discussion forum, we will put it on the discussion forum. Or you just uh, uh, put it on the discussion forum. Let's have some lively discussion because we learn from each other, isn't it? This, this kind of courses is such that we learn from each other. And uh, uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you very much. All the best. Uh, and uh, see you again in the next live session. And of course, do keep watching the lectures and don't forget to take your quizzes on time. Thank you.